大家好，欢迎来到英语故事时间。我是爱尔兰的董博涵。Today we have got a very interesting book all about facts and figures about this amazing planet we call Earth. Have you ever wondered what's the biggest country in the world? Where's the longest river? Which city has the biggest population? Well, today's book is going to amaze you and hopefully inform you. And it's called the Book of World Facts. Our amazing world. The world is an amazing place. It has countries and cities. It has long rivers, high mountains, and dry deserts. Look at these beautiful photographs. 也许你认得出来，这个这个山是喜马拉雅山，就是世界上海拔最高的山。What about this beautiful lake? So big and What about these emperor penguins in the South Pole? Have you ever wondered which country is the biggest? 有没有想过这个规模最大的国家是哪个国家呢 ？Which lake is saltier than the sea? Which is the coldest place in the world? This book is full of amazing facts about the world we live in. I think you're going to enjoy it. Let's start off by taking a look at cities. Cities are like very big towns. They have homes, offices, shops, and of course, people. Millions of people live in cities. Most people travel to cities to go to work. Let's take a look at this map of the world and find out what are the biggest and smallest cities in the world. So, the biggest city in the world is. Tokyo in Japan. The smallest city is a place called Hum in Croatia. Let's take a look at the biggest city in the world, Tokyo, Japan. The most important city in a country is called the capital city. Tokyo is the capital city of Japan. It has a population of nearly 40 million. Hum has a population of less. Than twenty-five, 就是比较人口最多、人口最少的两个大城市、两个城市，它也不能说大城市。So Tokyo, forty million. Hum in Croatia, twenty-five. Not million, just twenty-five. Take a look at this picture of Tokyo. This is an intersection where people cross the road. Look at all those people. <laughs> Countries next. Russia is the biggest country in the world. If somebody wanted to drive from one side to the other side, it would take about two weeks. That's how big Russia is. If you kept driving, it would take you two weeks. So the biggest country is Russia. However, the country with the largest population, China. 没错，中国是世界上人口最多的国家。China has the biggest population in the world. It's a bigger population than any other country. Currently, the population of China is about one billion people, and there is just a small percentage of them in a park. 看来是一个什么清明节什么的，就是这么多人叫人山人海嘛 ，People Mountain, People Sea. <laughs> the next interesting thing about our world are deserts. A desert is a place that does not get much rain. Some deserts are hot during the day, and or some deserts can be very, very cold. But all deserts are cold at night. Some deserts are rocky; others are sandy. You can see an example here of a rocky desert. You can see no sand, lots of dust and rock, but very little, if any, vegetation. 就是很少有植物，所以它叫做 Desert, desert. Camels are very, very important animals, especially for anybody who lives or works in or near a desert. So camels can live in a desert. They can survive for days without having a drink. So they're very, very useful and strong animals. The biggest desert in the world is the Sahara Desert in North Africa. It covers ten countries. The smallest desert is the Red Desert in South Africa, and it is just 200 meters wide. Imagine that, 
It's only 200 meters wide, compared to the Sahara, which is 10 countries wide. How about lakes next? Let's take a look at some of the most amazing lakes in the world. A lake is a patch of water in a dip in the ground. Some lakes are filled with fresh water. Some are filled with salty water. Now, what's the difference, do you think, between fresh water and salty water? Well, of course, you could drink fresh water. But what will happen if you try to drink salty water? You would get very, very sick. So the biggest lake is the Caspian Sea in Western Asia. You can see on the map just where that is. The deepest lake is Lake Baliki in Russia. Now let's take a look at this photograph of one of the most interesting lakes in the world. It's the saltiest lake. It's called the Dead Sea and it's so salty that you cannot sink. That means if you lie down in the water, you will float. And the reason it's called the Dead Sea is there are no fish in this lake, simply because there's too much salt. It's a very interesting and unusual place. Now it's time to look at some of the greatest mountains on our planet. A mountain is an area of land that is high up. Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world. It is cold and windy. It is a very high mountain. 哎，说到很高，那到底有多高呢 ？So the height of Mount Everest, according to the book, is eight thousand eight hundred and forty-eight meters, and it is on the border between China and Nepal. And it was first climbed by Sir Edmund Hillary in nineteen fifty-three. The first time a human was able to climb to the very top of this mountain. Now, because it's such a difficult place to transport or to move, we need a very special type of animal to help carry things while we're there. So, just like we had the camels of the desert for Mount Everest, we have an animal called a yak. So you can see a picture of a yak there. It, a yak has thick, woolly coats. To keep them warm, so they're perfect for mountain climbing. It says here that Mount Everest is as tall as 900 houses stacked one on top of the other. 可以想一下，如果能把九百栋房一个落一个，就差不多到了那个喜马拉雅山最高的那个位置了。太神奇了 ！An ocean. An ocean is a very big area of sea. The biggest ocean is called the Pacific Ocean. It reaches halfway around the world. You can see an example there. 就是太平洋，就是呃，在地球上规模最大的。The water in the ocean is very salty. What are the five oceans? 那这个世界上有五个大海。都分别是什么 ？The Pacific, the Atlantic, the Indian, Southern, and Arctic. Life in the oceans very, very interesting. Some deep sea animals can make their own light. You see a, an example there of that fish. It looks like it has a torch coming out of its head, which is actually true. It is indeed a light. So some places in the ocean are warm. And some are very cold. Deep in the ocean, the water is dark and freezing. The further down you go, the colder it gets because you are far away from the sun. So the light from the sun cannot reach the bottom of the ocean, which means it gets very, very cold. What do you call the very top and very bottom of our Earth? That's right. We call them the poles. North Pole. And South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere. So the poles are places at the top and bottom of the world. The North Pole is also called the Arctic, and according to the book, is set at the very top of the world. The South Pole is called the Antarctic, at the bottom. The poles are the coldest places on Earth. 
So they have different types of animals at either pole. The penguins live in the southern pole, in the Antarctic, whereas uh, animals like, say, for example, sea lions, walruses, polar bears live on the North Pole. There is no land on the North Pole. There are only frozen oceans. So it, it's all ice. But in the South Pole, it's actually a land mass. So there we can see a photograph of Antarctica. It's too cold to live in Antarctica all of the time, but scientists go there to work, to study the weather, the ice and the wildlife. So you can see a scientist there looking at all of these beautiful emperor penguins. Aren't they cute? <laughs> so even though it's too cold to live there, scientists do go there and they live in special containers that protect them from the environment. To go from the coldest places on Earth, let's move to more warmer places. One place in particular is the rainforest. Rainforests grow around the middle of the Earth where it is always hot. It rains almost every day. Many different kinds of animals live in the rainforest. And you can see a map there of the Brazilian rainforest or the Amazon, which is the biggest rainforest in the world today. Um, actually, the Amazon rainforest is so big, it goes over nine countries in South America. In this photograph, we can see an example of some of the animals and plant life that grow there. So we've got lots of different types of monkeys and birds and insects, of course, and lots of different types of uh, vegetation. We can see three examples. The cocoa tree, where we get uh, chocolate from, banana and Brazil nut or the Brazil nut tree which are very delicious as well. So there's all sorts of beautiful vegetation that grow in the Amazonian rainforest. Next take a look at some of the amazing rivers on our planet. So a river is made up of fresh water. It flows across the land. Many rivers start up high in the mountains and most rivers flow into the sea. So we can see examples of the longest rivers include the River Nile in North Africa and the Amazon which is in South America. You can see an example there. There's the maps of both rivers. These are the longest rivers in the world. Taking a look at the River Nile, the fantastic river, and um, it runs through nine countries and ends in Egypt in the Mediterranean Sea. It is home to many different types of animals and birds. Most rivers run from north to south, but the Nile River runs from south to north. It goes in the opposite direction. You can see an example there, an aerial photograph of the Amazon River. And you can see, obviously, different color water as well. The Amazon, remember, it goes through nine countries in the South America. And that's all for this particular story about the amazing world we live in. Lots of facts and information. Uh, there is a glossary at the end of this book which can help you to understand some of the more difficult words and vocabulary uh, that we read about in the story. But try to ask yourself some questions to make sure you understand, such as, what's the highest mountain in the world? That's right, it is the Himalayas. What are some of the longest rivers in the world? The Amazon and the Nile, very good. What's the smallest city in the world and where is it? Hum, in Croatia. Remember about deserts? The biggest desert is the Sahara, the smallest the Red Desert, only 200 meters wide. It's really interesting to learn about this beautiful planet. And you can test your friends on their knowledge of Earth. Okay, today's story will be finished here. Thank you for watching.
，下次有一个更精彩的故事等着你听，很期待与你分享。See you next time for more interesting English stories with me, Richard. Until then, bye bye.